Good morning, hello everybody. Today is gonna to be a very exciting little video. We're gonna talk about now what. I actually have been talking about this for a little while, but I wanted to include you in this discussion because it's really important to hear what you have to say. Post the Me Too movement, we're at a crossroads. There's, there's a place where we could loop right back into the trauma circle or we could actually have a paradigm shift in how we relate with one another and, and so that's what this video is gonna be about. So the first thing I want to say about the now what piece is that it's creative. We're here together to be creative. And yet one of the things I'm noticing very dominantly is that we're very good at expressing what we don't like. We're very good at complaining, at blaming, at shaming, even labeling individuals. And in the same breath, we don't offer what we love. We don't offer <clears throat> what's possible. So here's what I want to propose with this video. Excuse me. <clears throat> I'd like to propose that we can obviously express, we must express our discomfort and the things that are unhappy for us. And I would love to propose that every time we do this, especially in community, that we also lean into the uncomfortable conversation of what's next, what do we really want, and making ourselves more vulnerable to that conversation. It's so important. If you haven't been following me before, I'm Dr. Saida Desile, and I am an advocate and spokesperson for sexual sovereignty. And I wanna to talk to you about why sexual sovereignty is so crucial to now what, to the post Me Too uh, movement, and where we wanna to go together as community, as a humanity. So sovereignty, just for those of you who may not be familiar with it, means that you have the full authority, the autonomy over your own body and sexuality. You get to decide um, about your pleasure, about your fertility, about everything that has to do with your body. It's for you to decide and no one else. Why this is so important, why it's so crucial, is that because collectively we've not laid full claim to our body, we've also then collectively not had clear boundaries of uh, individual boundaries of what it looks like when we want to interact with other people, even just in a sensual way. So this is very important. I think the first step to creating change is that we start taking responsibility for this body that is ours. It's, it's absolutely necessary. And the way that we're going to do that is being in the body, not leaving the body. Uh, unfortunately, trauma often creates a disassociation with our body. So for the majority of us who have been through trauma, who are, are using our voice and coming forward and, and claiming that, is going to be crucial in, to the healing part of this journey. That we return to the body. That we start to rebuild trust first and foremost with our body and then that trust can start to extend outwardly. Part of building trust will be having an idea of what a boundary is, a clear boundary, because the reason we were hurt was that a boundary was crossed and it wasn't respected by another person and we didn't necessarily take a stand for it or we attempted to take a stand for it and it didn't work out very well for us. So, so this peace coming home to the body, number one, to um, creating a standard for yourself. Now I'm hoping that this will be a fluid boundary so that the people who are closest to you, you allow in to your life and that um, the people you don't want in your life, you know, the boundaries are much further out. So fluid boundaries are, I think, really important in the vision of what we get to bring into the world now as a collective so that we're not creating such rigid and intense boundaries based on fear where we're keeping everyone out. Because I can tell you that um, personally, I do like to have close friends and I do like to meet new people and I get curious about them. And if my boundaries are so crazy rigid where I'm never gonna allow, say for example, for some of us, never gonna to speak to another man again, for example, um, that's a bit extreme because they're, they're everywhere. And yet, for some of us, that's kind of what we've had to do. So let's look at fluid boundaries so that we can allow love and connection 
and safety and joy and expression into our lives and go, hey, this is my no. This is what I, I'm not allowing into my space. The third piece that's gonna be really important about this is not only coming back and really being embodied in your body, not only finding where your line is, where that fluid line is, but allowing others, this is where uh, I congratulate the Me Too movement for the voice activation. But so finding the voice to then express to your family, to your friends, to your community, um, this is my boundary, not with a sense of rigidity, but with a sense of completely, um, like a deep sense of your respect for self and respect for other. And I say respect for other because if we don't inform another what our boundary is, they could easily overstep it. And then it gets really uncomfortable, right? I have done that. I'm French Canadian. And there are times, because I'm very affectionate and I'm touchy-feely and I, I'm very playful and I'm a big flirt. So there are times where I have overstepped a person's boundary. And and they didn't say anything, but I could feel that something changed. And then I would say, did I just step over boundary? I'm really sorry. Like, I didn't mean that because what, I really just want to feel connected to you. I'm just very enthusiastic over here. I apologize. And um, it can be very awkward when that happens. Now, it is even, it's kind of awkward to just say I have a boundary, right? So when do you even say that? Well, how do you do it? So part of, of the communication of boundaries is the embodiment of it. And so it's not always verbal. It's, I have found now that I really embody my boundaries. It's very rare to feel um, invaded. Sometimes it happens and then I speak up, but if you really own and claim your space, it is felt by others. But if you're not in this space, it's like a free for all. So this is really important. So what I wanna do with this video today, because it is a now what conversation, I am going to stop and I'm gonna read and see who's here because I wanna engage you in what is your vision. We've gotta have this conversation, have it with your close friends, your family, even coworkers. Very, very important so that we can move forward in a way that's constructive. So let's see, Tanya's here, Diane, Annie, Susan, Cynthia. Uh, she says, love your conversation, rehealing and embodying our body with trust. Absolutely essential. Um, Saida Bali Begum, I think that's, um, let's see, that's, I think I, I hope I didn't pronounce that badly. Sometimes it's embarrassing to share this with new people because they may judge me that of that's what I'm afraid of. Okay. I get that. And this is what we're being called to. The reason the Me Too movement happened is because collectively there was a condition, an environment where it could exist that people were hurt and wouldn't speak up. That was something we all collectively contributed to. Our silence, our lack of willingness to say this is a boundary, or this is what is okay and not okay, or even standing up for someone who's doing that, created a environment where abuse could thrive. So this waking up that we're getting with the Me Too movement it's crucial to like use this, use this time, use this catalytic energy to bring something new in. So I wanna say to those of you who are um, a little bit afraid of embarrassing yourself or others or feeling like it could create a separation, initially it could. So part of what we're being asked collectively is to grow up. We're, we're being asked to mature sexually and we're being asked to mature emotionally. And that is to step into our sovereignty, to become that sexually sovereign being, to, to really know and be okay with, this is my ground. And if someone doesn't like it or feels embarrassed, that's for them, not for you. And, and it's hard because you want to be loved and you want to be accepted. But it's part of the maturation process. We've got to take that risk. And I, I can tell you, that if the people in your life right now wouldn't respect a boundary that you say that you have, I don't know that they're the right people to be around. 
because that's the condition where abuse can happen. I know it sounds harsh, but, but we have to all see how am I contributing to this thing? Because we're not separate from it. Even if we ourselves have missed being abused, we've collectively contributed to that of others through our silence through not insisting that our environment is different. So that's what's happening. It's an edgy conversation, can be really uncomfortable. It's like, ugh, don't wanna have this conversation. And we must, and we must, because all healthy beings, if you go to the wilderness, you'll see this, all healthy beings have good boundaries. It's just part of being healthy. It really is. And because we've swayed so far away from that, it's uncomfortable but we can come back collectively and it's going to take a little bit of discomfort to do that. So, um, but I will be here and in my project, the daring project for women, I'm sorry guys, if you're a man watching this, it's only for women right now, but you will learn how to do this. We learn as a collective because we hold an environment where we see each other as powerful, where our voice matters, our story matters, and you get to learn and flex these muscles of using your voice. It's so crucial, I cannot tell you. And if you are a mother or an adult, you are modeling to the next generation what kind of world we wanna live in. So here's what's really interesting. When we have healthy boundaries, often then we don't need to constantly voice them. We do have respect for ourselves and others. And there's a whole collective of deeper respect and understanding and joy and playfulness that actually comes from having healthy boundaries. When our boundaries are not healthy, it's when things get weird and sticky. So I want you to consider that. So Tanya says, yes, I feel our boundary needs to be like a second skin, which is breathable, permeable, and fluid. And yes to claiming our space. And Christina and Jamila, hello, um, have come in. So the last piece, what we're gonna do for this last piece together, I'm going to invite those who are here to type in oh, a vision of what you would love. How would you love your interaction to be? So while you're typing that in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to offer a last piece about where the Me Too movement can go wrong and what we can do right now to actually create really strong, lasting, positive transformation for ourselves and the world. So where the Me Too movement can go wrong is if we start to loop in the victim and blaming, shaming, labeling mode. That's where it can go wrong. I addressed that a little earlier in the video, but I want to stress it here. So I want that expressed. I want you to come forward. And then if you don't like something, if you don't agree with something, great. And then offer what you love. Start to be the influencer. Start to be the leader, even in the tiniest way, by having an opinion, by being creative. What would you love? What kind of world would be just so fantastic to live in? Because here's what I know for sure. This was asked to me of a recent, in a recent interview. And I said, well, here's what I know for sure. I know that there's a climate creating a big division between men and women right now. That's not true in my personal world, but that's you know what we're sort of witnessing. And the um, person asking me the question said, what do we do about that? What do we do about this growing division? And I said, what we do is we get creative. We choose the reality that we want to live in. I am not going to let something or a movement out there determine how I'm going to relate to others. No way. No way. Are you? Are you going to let someone else dictate the terms of how you live your life? Or are you going to step up and go, hey, this is how I want to live my life. I'm going to take a risk. I actually enjoy conversations with men and women, and I enjoy strong and healthy conversations, and I actually enjoy hugs once in a while. I actually love dancing, and I want to be in a world where I can do that. Great. So know what isn't okay. Have the freedom to name it, and then bring your gift of inspiration. Bring that creative space. Bring what you'd love. It is so important. If we want real transformation here, if we want to affect the next 
generations, if we want to make sure that this movement doesn't just loop back into um, a cycle where we repress sexuality even more, where we're more angry towards one another, where we are more afraid of each other, because that's where it could go. There are people believing that the only solution to what's happened is to castrate all men on this planet, and boys too. And I don't agree with that. So what can we do aside from that? That's not a solution in my world. It's not a solution in my world. Is it for you? And what would you like? Okay, crucial question. So Roxana just um, joined us. Cynthia says, I need to develop those fluid boundaries which can tell me how to respond. Yes. So ladies, if you don't know how to do that, I do write about it in my book. If you know my book, it's called The Emergence of the Sensual Woman. I write a lot about fluid boundaries. And if you want to see it in action, come to The Daring Project and join us. It's You get 30 days to try it. It's a really amazing place. And if you want to exercise it, choose someone in your life that's, that's safe to first do it with and get familiar with it. And then start to, in your own private space, learn to say no and yes and no and yes and really get strong with what do those feel like and get comfortable saying them. It's okay. It's okay to say them. It's essential you say them. Actually, it'll keep you safe and it'll actually make you a safer person to be around. So Tanya says, I would love the world where everybody embodies their unique musical note, which is different from another, but the difference creates a symphony. The challenge is the willingness to play our music. I can't read the rest because I'm on the phone, but amazing, yes. And in that unique world where we're each part of this greater symphony, there's going to be deep respect. That's what I'm calling in. And in order for that to be true, I have to live that. I have to practice that. That is the only way. We've got to start modeling right away what we love. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that beautiful? And being vulnerable and being strong, it's the same. It's the same. It's part of sovereignty. Vulnerability and strength are part of sovereignty. And they're part of who you are. It's natural. It's like breathing. So I'm really, really honored and thrilled. I think this is so important. But what's more important is your opinion, so please leave it below this video, especially what you love. And if you do play around with fluid boundaries, what has it been like for you? I want to hear about this, okay? And please share this with your friends, with loved ones, and initiate a conversation and get curious because curiosity, curiosity is the thing that will also create this transformation. When we make assumptions, which I see a ton of assumptions right now, when we make assumptions, right, we're making ass out of you and me when we assume. <laughs> so we don't want to assume. We want to get really good and it's vulnerable. We want to get curious and we want to ask questions. Crucial, crucial, crucial to really healthy transformation. And I say this with a lot of love. I see women out there who, who believe they're open-hearted and they're asking other women who have a very different viewpoint. Why do you believe what you believe? I can't believe that you believe in this thing. Already there, there's a judgment, even though you're saying you're judgment free. So let's take responsibility for our space, our hearts, our boundaries, our voice, and let's take responsibility with our curiosity. And not use it in an abusive way, but use it in a creative way. Tanya says, yes, I feel that we each have our own bodies. We must have 100 trillion cells in our body ready to play with us. Yeah, that's great. That's amazing. So thank you everyone for being here today. This, I'm going to keep this really short. Again, write your vision. Contribute your vision. Sometimes we believe that we don't have impact, that we don't matter, that the choices we make, meh, they're inconsequential. We're not big, famous people or people that can leverage you know, our influence. But I'm gonna tell you right now, imagine a world where every individual knows that she or he matters and knows that how they are in the world 
has impact and knows that every choice they make has impact. And it's either going to impact in creating the world they love or it's going to impact in keeping it in the way that they can't stand. So who are you going to be? What kind of person will you be? The person who allows someone else to, to set the terms of how you're going to live? Or are you going to claim your life and start to say, hey, I'm going to live on these terms. These make sense to me. Those don't make sense. I'm going to live this way. It will feel initially very scary, but I can tell you, there is, you're not alone. There's a vast growing community of amazing human beings taking this on. Some of them are part of my Daring Project. If you'd like to be part of it, definitely check it out, thedaringproject.com. I'll put the link in the description above. Again, um, Tanya says, yeah, more responsibility equals more power. Love you, Saida. Thank you, Tanya. Yes, if we wanna be that powerful being that we actually are, if we wanna actualize the force of nature that we actually are, <laughs> it's not something that we just go, I'm a force of nature, and then we don't act. Your actions are your power. Your actions are your power. So what will you choose? How will you act? And I am here to support you in being even more embodied in your sexual sovereignty, in your voice, and in those choices. I am here to celebrate you, to celebrate your truth, and to hold the space so that the, the, the healing, if you're on a healing journey right now, that there is um, a place where that healing comes into completion and you're now in your power around the wound. That's what I hold for you. It's what happened for me and it's what I've witnessed in so many incredible women around the world and it's what I hold true for you. So thank you. And if you are a man watching this, your opinion also matters. Your actions really matter. So leave them here too. I want to know what kind of world do you want to live in? What would you love? All right, everybody. Have an incredible rest of your day. Sending you a ton of love, a ton of joy, and a little bit of challenge and daring into having you take the next step beyond just voicing and sometimes complaining. I get that we need to do that. Into being a creative, impactful member of humanity. All right. Oh, wait, Jackie says, I imagine a world where the children are taught and have models of what you are talking about so we can have young people growing up with better ways of relating with self and others. Yes, Jackie, I am all in with that vision. And it will not happen if we don't start modeling it. And this includes healthy sexuality. It includes pleasure in a good way. And if we have pleasure in a good way and healthy sexuality and boundaries, Wow, what an incredible next generation we're going to have. So thank you again, everybody. Contribute, contribute, contribute. Your voice matter. You matter. And we'll talk to you really soon.